Welcome to Bite Size Data Science. It's now time to talk about recommendation engines with collaborative filtering. Recommendation engines have become a crucial part of e-commerce and other areas. We take it for granted in movies, music, and product recommendations. It is likely that we can find useful ways to apply it in many industries. The Spark MLLib library provides an algorithm that fits in this category called alternating least squares. This algorithm has the additional benefit of using unsupervised learning. This means that we can use it without having pre-scored data. Let's get an understanding of what it is about. Note that collaborative filtering became better known during the Netflix challenge that started in 2006. To win the $1 million prize, a team would have to develop an approach that would improve on Netflix recommendation by 10% or more. The prize was eventually won in 2009, but in the meantime, each year, the best team won a $50,000 progress prize. This collaborative filtering applies to datasets with implicit feedback. This means that instead of relying on people to tell you what they think about your product, how they rate them, we look at the user's actions. For an e-commerce site, this can include what they bought, what they looked at before buying, and so on. When you think about it, you are what you buy. This defines you. Similarly, products are bought by many people and, in a way, that defines them. So, if I buy guitar instruction books, guitar picks, and so on, I identify myself as a type of user interested in these types of items. So, if other users that are part of the same type of group are interested in, let's say, metronomes, it is likely that I could be interested too. The reverse is also true. If a bunch of people that are somewhat similar buy specific items, it adds to the probability that these items are related to each other as a group. So, we don't know what these people or item groups are, but we can see that they exist and that these groups have characteristics. This leads to the concept of latent factors or features that tie people and products together. How many latent factors are there? We don't know. This is part of the experimentation required to building a model, deciding how many latent factors we want to use. At this point, what we need to know is that there are multiple characteristics that can tie people and products together, and the role of the recommendation is to take advantage of the factors that tie each user to each product and complete the picture to provide a more complete picture for each user in each product. So why do we talk about alternating least squares? This is a method used in the matrix multiplication to get to the final answer. The name is an indication. First look at least squares. When we talked about linear regression, we talked about fitting a line that would model the data. One way to achieve this is to minimize the sum of the square differences between the observed values and the values found on the line. As for the alternating, it is due to the fact that in one iteration of adjusting the values, we fix, let's say, the user side of the latent factors and adjust the product's latent factors. Then we alternate by keeping the product's latent factors fixed and adjusting the people latent factors. This discussion ties the concepts of linear regression we saw in the basic videos and grouping we saw in k-means video. There is a lot more to recommendation engines in alternating least square, but this gives us a frame of reference so we can understand what it does and have somewhat intelligent discussions about recommendation engines with more knowledgeable people. See you next time on Bite Size Data Science.